Hello everyone, Jonah Gelzo here with Audio Touch Plus, and today I'm going to begin my tutorial series on producing great sound on location. Over the next few months, I will be covering different topics that relate to production sound, what equipment is needed and the techniques essential for getting the best sound for your next film or video production piece. When producing a video, what's more important, the picture or the sound? Through my experience, I find all too many people put all the focus and attention on the visuals and leave audio as an afterthought. However, before you attempt to answer this question for yourself, indulge me for a moment and consider this. Let's say you're at home. Go ahead, sit back and throw in your favorite movie. Or to save you some time, why don't you let me decide what movie we should watch? Seeing that this is my tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and play a short scene from a film I made back in college. Now let's pretend we hit mute and watch seeing how much information we can gather having only the visuals to pull from. Okay, now let's go ahead and play that clip once more. However, this time relying only on the audio as our guide into what's taking place in the story. The following takes place between my North Campus class that ends at 9.50 and my class in DeMoss that starts at 10 o'clock. This is the most frustrating part of my day. Hey, what's up? Hey, yeah. What do you need? Bethany, it's like 9.52. Oh, call me right back. Yeah, okay. CTU, this is Bethany. Yeah, Bethany, listen. I have seven minutes to get to class. I need you to upload to my cell phone the current LU Transit bus status. Okay, hold on one second. Let me see what I can find. Yeah, I can wait. Uploading right now. Okay, call if you need anything else. Actually, if you could pick up a gallon of. <sighs> Dang it. Now, which of these examples conveyed the least amount of information? Chances are it was the first example, having only visuals but no sound. However, the movie audio without any visuals probably conveyed enough information to just about give you a complete understanding of the scene. Notice how easy it was to follow along with the story and not miss the scene's overall direction? While the visuals in a movie are no doubt an important factor to any movie, you might now be able to understand the important role that audio plays in any production piece, as it really is the backbone of every film, television production, and commercial piece. People often fail to realize this very point and spend most of their time putting all their focus and attention to the picture. But a video with a poor picture and great sound is still usually going to be much more informative, get the message across, and be better received by the audience than one with great picture but terrible sound. Now that we all have a better idea of how important audio is for any type of video production piece, let's go ahead and move on to the main focus of this video tutorial, producing great location sound for any video production. The first step to producing great sound for video is ditching your camcorder's built-in microphone. Your onboard mic might just be fine for home videos, picking up general background sound and decent dialogue within about 12 feet or so, 
But if you have any desire to take that next step to start producing content to be viewed by people other than your mom and your loyal fans on YouTube, then it's time to break free from the mold, taking a giant step in a new and exciting direction, leaving amateur sounding productions behind you. I know it might be scary, but take that leap of faith with me and I promise you won't ever want to look back. Now that we've let go of relying on our camcorder's onboard microphone, it seems logical that, well, we need another microphone now. However, great sound entails much more than just an overpriced microphone. You need a piece of equipment that is specifically designed to bring the low signal of your microphone up to a workable level or line level signal. You might be led to believe that this piece of equipment is probably bountiful with buttons, knobs, switches, and comes with a manual full of jargon that we have no understanding of. All quite intimidating, I'd say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the backbone of any sound guy's arsenal, the Portable Field Audio Mixer. This piece of equipment is the foundation for producing great sound. As you might notice, it does have a bounty of buttons, knobs, switches, and a manual full of jargon. However, with a little perseverance, common sense, and a little motivation, you'll be a pro, or at least feel like one, and feel just as comfortable working this device just as if you were riding a bike. And for those of you who still have a problem with balance, don't worry, I'll be your training wheels. Back to the topic at hand. Yes, many prosumer and even some consumer level camcorders boast some way of taking low signal levels and boosting them to usable levels, which might leave you asking, why invest in the field mixer? Let me give you an example. You have two options. You can either purchase a ticket through Greyhound and suffer being on an uncomfortably long and noisy bus ride with excessive stops, or pay the extra money to rent a private jet with comfortable seats, much quieter atmosphere, and a streamlined and efficient way of getting you to your final destination. Okay, so maybe it's not the best example ever, but nevertheless, both options will help you achieve your goal. However, the quality in which they get you there is vastly different. Choosing to use your internal camcorder low quality mic preamps to boost the signal of your microphone over that of the field mixer's high quality preamps will ultimately result in noisier audio because the mic circuits in low to mid-level video cameras are quite poor in quality and function. Another downfall of most low-end camcorders is that they don't even allow you the option of manually adjusting microphone levels at all. And even the ones that do give you that option have awkward and difficult controls which make controlling your audio levels during location shoots very painful if not nearly impossible. Where the camcorder fails, the field mixer shines. Let's talk about a few reasons that make having a field mixer an important accessory to any production. As I mentioned earlier, one essential reason for using a field mixer is that its mixer preamps are much higher quality and will produce a much better sound. A preamp or a preamplifier gives your sound a particular character as it shapes the tone. Keep in mind that not all preamps are equal. This is precisely why the preamps in a field mixer are going to sound much better than those in your video camera. Number two, a field mixer lets you manually vary or ride the volumes of your source signal accurately without shaking the camera or getting in the way of the camera operator. When I'm on a location shoot, I am constantly adjusting the levels as need be to get the most out of the actor's dialogue. Number three, a good mixer will also provide you with limiters which allow you to ride your signals hotter while protecting you against signal distortion. A limiter is essentially a compressor with a much higher ratio and usually a faster attack time. We'll leave talk of ratios and attack times for another day. But for those of you that are not familiar with compression at all, compression, much like limiting, is a process that reduces the dynamic range or the difference between the loud and quiet part of an audio signal. Compression is used during many different sound recording applications in order to control the level of audio before being sent to its final destination. Whether that's through PA speakers, into a field recorder, or into your video camera. In basic terms, a compressor or limiter is an automatic volume control used to control louder sounds over a certain threshold point by reducing them in level while the quieter sounds are left untouched. Compression and limiting is a topic that could be spoken on all day, but for this video tutorial, let's just focus more on limiting. 
Picture a seven foot tall basketball player standing next to a short five foot tall girl. The basketball player represents the loud signal while the short girl represents the quieter signals. Now picture both individuals standing in a room. The ceiling above them represents the threshold or the point at which the limiter is activated. Currently, no limiting is being applied to the signal, as the signals are in their original states. However, as the ceiling is lowered, the threshold point is lowered as well. As the ceiling continues to lower, the tall basketball player begins to hit the ceiling, reducing his size accordingly while the short girl remains unaffected. The more the ceiling falls or the threshold point is lowered, the less height or signal strength is needed to activate the limiter thus decreasing even further the dynamic range. Good mixers also have some basic EQ or low cut filters that give you the option of rolling off lower frequencies, eliminating annoying low end rumble and noise from your source signal. When recording location dialogue, of which will hardly ever fall below 85 Hz, this feature is invaluable as it will clean up the low end muddiness of your signal before it gets to your audio. Also, a good field mixer will have multiple outputs, so you can run a feed to more than one camera or field recorders. You might not be able to appreciate the importance of this feature perhaps now, but trust me, on higher end productions, having multiple outputs is indispensable. Redundancy is the key here, and a good mixer will help you accomplish that task. Lastly, while even a pricier prosumer camera might have one or two decent balanced XLR inputs, a good mixer will provide you with at least three, typically about four, and on higher end mixers, five or more. Having a wealth of inputs increases the possibilities for any production. Many documentaries and reality TV shows thrive on this ability to mix four or more individual signals effectively on the go. Also, you have ability to power special microphones through use of phantom power, which is the process of sending a small current down through the XLR cable right down to your microphone, polarizing its diaphragm. On a good mixer, phantom power will be available and on each microphone input. However, even if you just plan to use only one microphone, there's never a reason to ditch the field mixer. We already talked about how a good mixer not only allows you to control audio volume levels through the use of rotating knobs, but will provide you with a limiter which will get you out of trouble quite often by helping to even out the audio. It will also enable you to change the tone and reduce low end rumble, which is a great feature, especially when you only need to focus on good clean dialogue. Hopefully you've begun to realize in a small way the great potential having a field mixer can bring to a production, even when you're only using one input for recording. Now that you have a little better understanding of why a field mixer is important, and as well as pointing out some of the more key features that most good mixers will bring to the table, let's go ahead now and talk about what features are most essential to look for, where to buy them, how much money you'll need to drop to get what you need, and some of the differences between mixers as well. Unfortunately, just like practically everything in life, you get what you pay for. This is no exception when it comes to portable field audio mixers. There are plenty of reliable and great sounding field mixers out there, but there are also very many poorly constructed and poor sounding mixers as well. The trick is to do your research and spend the necessary money to get a rig that will not only last you a long time, but give you a powerful set of features that will greatly enhance the sound of all your future projects. Many people go the route of spending as little money as possible when it comes to sound equipment, and they usually end up paying dearly for it. The one great thing about high-end audio equipment is that it is significantly cheaper than video equipment, and it lasts much longer too. So if you invest in a high-quality mixer from the get-go, I guarantee that it will pay for itself countless times over. Generally speaking, anything under about $200 isn't going to get you much. You're typically going to be looking at very cheap construction, often no phantom power, poor metering if none at all, and components that sadly won't withstand much rigorous usage. Also, you're going to find much cheaper mic preamps, cheap pots, which control the volume of each individual input, and often just quite a bit of extra noise. I'd say a safe bet is to at least look to spend about $600 on a mixer if you're on a tight budget and doing lower end productions or low budget short films. 
and closer to about 2000 if you're really looking for something that will be more suitable for higher level productions such as television or film. Now, I realize many of you don't have an extra $2,000 to just drop like that. And if you did, you'd probably be away off at some ritzy school learning from high paid professors instead of me. However, with any mixer you intend to buy, be thinking first what needs you will have out in the field and what unit will best meet those needs, keeping in mind your budget. Be on the lookout for the number of inputs with switchable mic or line level. Typical mixers will offer you with four inputs, but some mixers only offer three. Higher end field mixer manufacturers offer units with five or six inputs and even give you the option of gauging or connecting multiple units together for even more inputs. Also be on the lookout for support for 48 volt phantom power and lesser known 12 volt T power. Some condenser microphones as well as shotgun microphones require external powering options such as these. These powering options are extremely important to have, especially if you are planning to use many different types of microphones. Also look for available limiting functionality. When it comes to analog, LED or LCD metering, it's really a matter of preference. Look for low cut filters to remove low end rumble or wind noise a slate microphone to audibly slate scene and take numbers which is a handy feature if you don't have a slate board nearby but still need some way of notating your takes for later ease in post-production editing. 1 kilohertz tone generator for calibration between mixer and video camera or field recorder. Battery test and low battery indication. Switchable left center right or variable panning function for distributing your source signals for your final output mix tape return option for monitoring the audio coming out of the camera, and the number of switchable mic line level outputs for feeding to the camera or recorder. Most mixers have a balanced stereo output, but some higher end mixers allow support for multiple stereo output feeds. Be looking out for these helpful features as you look into purchasing a field mixer for yourself. During my next video tutorial on producing great sound on location, I will give an overview of multiple field mixers ranging from the high end to mixers suited to meet those of you on a tighter budget. Thanks for watching. I'm Jonah Gelzo with Audio Tuts Plus.